Houston has given a statement to our Mike Emanuel that they are not aware of any federal investigations uh, into their operations. Uh, as for the whistleblower story, I wish there had been time to bring that to you today, <laughs> but we're going to do that in the next couple of days. But with so much breaking news on the foundation, that's what we uh, decided to focus on this morning, John. Yeah, so stay you, tuned. you have okay. your hands full these days. <laughs> Very full. Yeah, sorry if there's a uh, miscommunication. <laughs> All right, no, thank you. No worries, okay. Catherine. We'll look sure. forward to that. Thank okay. you. Uh, we'll welcome. certainly get to all the news, the important headlines of the day. The Trump team crisscrossing the country, targeting battleground states in the last days of this race. Right now, Mr. Trump is gearing up for a rally in Jacksonville, Florida, the all-important state. As his running mate, Governor Mike Pence, gets ready for a different rally in Iowa. John Roberts is live in Jacksonville with more for us now. John? Jenna, good morning to you. Donald Trump wrapping up this morning, a day and a half long stint here in the Sunshine State. 29 electoral votes up for grabs. So this is the big prize among all of the battleground states. A new Quinnipiac poll shows the race exceedingly close here in Florida. Take a look at this. Hillary Clinton leading by a single point, 46 to 45. Also a tight race now in the state of Colorado, where a new University of Denver poll has got it even up at 39 apiece. And a new WBUR poll in New Hampshire has Donald Trump up by a single point there in the Granite State. 40 to 39 percent over Hillary Clinton. So the polls are tightening a bit, but the problem for Donald Trump is that he really has zero margin for error in his path to the White House. If he loses Florida, it's all over. If he loses Ohio, it's probably over. So that is why, in addition to keeping the spotlight squarely on the various controversies swirling around the Hillary Clinton campaign, Trump has to ensure in these closing days that he doesn't commit any of the unforced errors that he has so many times in the past. It's a concept that Donald Trump seems to have finally embraced based on what he told the crowd last night in Pensacola. Listen. We've got to be nice and cool. Nice and cool. Right? Stay on point, Donald. Stay on point. No sidetracks, Donald. Nice and easy. Nice. Because I've been watching Hillary the last few days. She's totally on a hinge. We don't want any of that. You're walking your way. Jacksonville, where he is this morning, of course, a very heavily military town. Uh, used to, the Air Force used to be here. There's still a naval air station here going to North Carolina, big military state after this. So he'll talk a lot about his plans to rebuild the military as well as reform the Veterans Affairs Administration. But he'll still keep talking about all of the controversies surrounding the Clinton campaign, including the latest revelations that the FBI is investigating the Clinton Foundation. All of this taken together, the steady drip, drip, drip is something that Trump's campaign manager, Kelly Ein Conway believes is really taking a toll on her position, at least in the polls. Here's Conway from earlier this morning. I think there's a 100% chance that all these this scandalabra is catching up with her in the polls. I mean, you see we're really scandalabra. scandalabra. You see that we're really catching up, catching her in these blue states like Colorado tied to tied at 39, tied at 39, according to. And this is a woman who I always say, Brian, can't get past 46%. It turns out in some of these states, she can't get past 40, 42% in states that President Obama carried with well over 50 percent of the vote. And Donald Trump isn't the only Trump that's on the campaign trail today. His wife Melania has got a big speech in Berwyn, Pennsylvania, that's in the Philadelphia suburbs, trying to ramp up support and enthusiasm among Republican women. It's interesting if you look at the new ABC News uh, daily tracking poll, uh, Donald Trump leads among non-college educated women by 21 points, but Hillary Clinton leads him among college educated women by 27. So he definitely needs to do better in that area. Jenna? John, thank you. We are also getting a brand new snapshot of the race for the White House. According to the latest New York Times CBS News poll released today, Hillary Clinton holds a narrow lead over Donald Trump nationally, 45 to 42 percent. But that is within, pardon me, the margin of error. And the latest Washington Post ABC News tracking poll also shows a very tight race nationally. Clinton edging Trump 47 to 45 percent also within the margin of error. Let's talk about it with Chris Wallace, anchor of Fox News Sunday. Chris, we now know that there are two investigations, FBI investigations involving Hillary Clinton, one into the Clinton Foundation, the other into her um, private homebrew server, if you will. Is that what is making this race so tight? I, I think it's a major factor. Uh, I, there was always a, a sense that Republicans would come home as we got closer and closer to the election and people had to choose, even those who weren't sold on Donald Trump. 
would decide they wanted to vote Republican and not Democratic. But but clearly, uh, this has boosted support among Trump's base and maybe gotten some persuadable voters along with them. And it's dampened support for Hillary Clinton. In one of the polls that you just cited there, his enthusiasm is now somewhat greater. His supporters' enthusiasm for Trump is higher than Clinton's supporters' enthusiasm for her. Uh, and that could play a big role because in the end, you know, it's it's not just uh, what the support is, it's who's people actually go out and vote. We saw that in 2012 where uh, the Clinton team shocked the Romney team because they were able to get more young people, more minorities out to vote than the model that the Romney campaign had set up. Uh, and if that happens for Trump, they could surprise Clinton just because more of their supporters come out and fewer of Clinton supporters did. But you know, you know, the much of Hillary Clinton's advertising, uh, many of the claims she's made about this race are that Donald Trump is too unstable, too um, impulsive, I guess, to be trusted with the nation's nuclear codes, for instance. Now comes this information uh, that five foreign governments apparently were successfully able to hack into the Clinton email server. Uh, and if you think about who those five foreign governments might be, it just suggests a recklessness with with the nation's you know secret information um, that is really I think damaging to her campaign. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the, it's what uh, Kellyanne Conway, the campaign manager of Trump, called the scandalabra. I hadn't heard that expression before, but I suspect uh, it'll be trending. Uh, it, you know, there's just an array of allegations here about honesty, about trustworthiness, about carefulness with information, uh, about the p potential that she could be the president-elect and the, and the target of criminal investigations. Uh, it's messy. It's, it, it is certainly not the way you want to go into the final days of a campaign. And, you know, there's another point here that, that you know, these are historically un- uh, likable uh, candidates in yes. terms of their favorable numbers, unfavorable uh, high ratings for for both of them. And and generally speaking, what we've seen, John, is when the focus is on one, they tend to go down. When the focus is on the other, they tend to go down. Well, the focus right now is on Hillary Clinton in an extremely unflattering light, uh, and that's not good for her. Which explains why Donald Trump is, uh, as we just heard, so determined to stay cool, as he put it. Uh, that new survey out of Colorado shows them tied at 39-39. That, that from the University of Denver, which gave me my first job as a 15-year-old lawnmower. So I, I have to put uh, very heavy right weight on Right credence into that. 39% uh, tied in Colorado, but as was pointed out earlier, that leaves something like, uh, well, when you factor in the independents who are running, it leaves something like 13% of the electorate in Colorado that hasn't made a decision yet. Yeah, which I doubt is true. Um, you know, I want to go back to something that, that uh, John Roberts said in his report, which is that she has a huge advantage in the electoral map, that, that you look at the reliably blue states, uh, they almost take you to 270. 18 states in the District of Columbia have voted Democratic six elections in a row, 242 electoral votes, leaves her just 28 short. Uh, the, the reliably Republican states, uh, 13 have voted Republican six elections in a row, 102 electoral votes. So he's got to win all of those. Then he's got to win all of the swing states that we talk about, like Florida, like Ohio, like North Carolina. He still isn't close to 270. He's going to win every state that he has any possibility of winning, including the swing states. And then he's got to flip at least one of those reliably democratic states like a Pennsylvania or Wisconsin or Michigan. So it's the poker equivalent of drawing to an inside straight. He has almost no margin for error. He's got to win every state. He has a chance of winning. She has more paths, but there are a lot of more paths opening up for him in these last, well, since last Friday uh, and the beginning of Scandalabra uh, <laughs> than, than we had thought there were. So, yeah. you and know, this race, is, this race is up for grabs with about four or five days left. The woman who may have coined that phrase is going to be your guest this weekend, I understand. Yeah, I suspect that phrase will be mentioned on Sunday. We will be talking to Kellyanne Conway, Trump's campaign manager, in what maybe you've seen it, I haven't, the new Fox News election headquarters. I'm told it looks like the bridge of the Starship Enterprise. Oh, yes. 
I can't wait to get up there and take a look at it. Yeah, it is, it is befitting a man of your stature, Chris Wallace. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I'm Captain Kirk. Maybe I'm Mr. Spock. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> you, you play both roles well, I'm sure. Chris, thank you. University right now, President Obama holding a rally there for Hillary Clinton on the west side of Miami. Let's listen in for a moment. The reason I make this point is because I think in 2008 they were predicting that if Obama got elected, gas would be six dollars. So sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's useful to check the tape see what they said before, it turns out what they said was wrong. So what that means is what they're saying now is probably also wrong. Anyway, I just wanted to do that little detour. But in addition to, <laughs> right, thanks Obama, two dollar down there. Kick, kicked our addiction on foreign oil, doubled our production of clean energy, have done more to battle climate change than any time in our history. We're world leaders on that. We brought home more of our men and women in uniform, took out Osama bin Laden. Our systematically rolling up ISIL in Iraq, and by the way, back home, we've made sure that in all 50 states, people have the freedom to marry who they love. So, so there's a reason that I've got gray hair. Because I've been busy. And most of all, across these 50 states as I've traveled, what I've seen is the thing that really makes America great. No, it's, it's you. You, you. I've seen the American people, people of every party, every faith, every race, every region, people who know we're stronger together. Young, old, young and old folks, men and women, black, white, Latino, Asian, Native American, Folks with disabilities, gay, straight folks, it doesn't matter, all of us pledging allegiance to the red, white, and blue. That's the America I know. That's the America we love. And there's only one candidate in this race who has devoted her life to building up that America. And that is the next president of the United States of America, Hillary Clinton. Make no mistake, Florida, all the progress we've made goes out the window if we don't win this election. So we've got to work our hearts out this week. We've got to work like our future depends on it because it actually depends on it. And listen, especially for the young people out there, I, I know some of you, this is your first election where you've been paying attention. And you're out there and you're looking at it and you're saying, man, this is really nasty. You know, generally, D.C. is not so much of a battleground, but down here, it's just like every ad is just depressing. And there's negative ads and there's noise and there's distractions. And sometimes the temptation is to tune it out and you want to just focus on the Cubs winning the World Series. Which, by the way, even for a, a White Sox fan, is a pretty big deal. Because they, so sorry. Because, because the Cubs have been waiting like 108 years. I was watching something on television, they explained that the last time the Cubs had won, Thomas Edison was alive, and they hadn't invented sliced bread yet. So, you know the expression, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread? This is actually, for Cubs fans, the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I want to congratulate the Chicago Cubs.
for an amazing season. The president there campaigning for Hillary Clinton, his former secretary of state in Miami. We have just learned that the president, the first lady and uh, the Clinton family, Bill, Chelsea and Hillary Clinton, are going to be campaigning. You would call it a, a pre-election rally on Monday night in Philadelphia. That gives you some indication of how how much importance they are placing on the vote in Philadelphia. Pennsylvania is a state that Mrs. Clinton is counting on when winning Donald Trump says he thinks he can win it. And the transit strike that is afflicting Philadelphia right now could have an impact on the vote. Uh, the, the transit workers who are on strike have offered to cancel their strike or, or postpone their strike for election day. We'll be back in a moment with more happening now. We asked people to write down the things they love to do most.